once the sediment has been retrieved from the lake, the next step will be to cut the sediment core tube so we can see the sediment inside. The first step will be to drain off the excess water. So with a sharp instrument, just like a sharpened nail or something like that, I'm going to make a hole just a centimeter or two above the sediment in my core tube. Now, I make this hole carefully, and it won't be until I start lifting off this top cap that it'll start to drain out, and you need to be careful here because it's going to make a little bit of a mess. So we just need to drain out the water from the top of the sediment. Once the water is drained off the top of the sediment, we'll use some sodium polyacrylate, sometimes known under the brand name Zorbitrol, to soak up some of this excess water at the top of the sediment. So I'll just take a small amount of this material that's very water absorbing, and I'll sprinkle it down in on top of the water. And it turns the water into a gel and it preserves the sediment. Now even if I turn it over sideways, the sediment stays in position because the gel has formed on top with that last remaining water. Once the water on top has turned into a gel, we're going to need to cut off the excess plastic on the top of the core tube. Now an easy way to do that is using something like a rotary Dremel tool. I'm going to score around the top of this tube, cutting off the excess plastic. It's a good idea to use eye protection. With the excess plastic removed, we have a much more manageable length core segment. Next, we'll slice down through both sides of the plastic of the core liner. Using a sharp razor knife or a utility knife, I cut down the length of the core tube. We'll do this on both sides of the core. At some point I'll need to remove the core sample from the bottom cap. Now I'll finish cutting the remainder of the plastic on both sides and now I'll take a wire tool this um, is just a wire cutting tool that can be purchased from any craft supply or art supply where they sell tools for people who work in clay I'll, end, I'll slide this wire right down through the slit in the core that I just made with a knife and then hopefully the core will come cleanly into two pieces. So now we can see a really nice split core half. After the cutting the core sample into two pieces, the next will be to scrape off the top layer of sediment from the core half. As the wire was drawn through the sample, some fragments from one end may have ended up at the other, and we want to scrape those off. So here's another tool that came from a ceramic supply, or a pottery supply um, location, and I'm going to just gently scrape the top surface of the clay off of my sediment sample. By doing this, I will scrape away any debris that got pulled up from the bottom, and I'll have a better view of the samples and the different textures and the different layers within the single sample. So I'm, I'll scrape across, removing just a fine layer of sediment across 
horizontally across the core half. So now with the surface scraped, we can see finer layering within the sample itself. So we'll start to look at these different layers and see if they can tell us about the history of what the lake was doing when these different sediment layers were deposited. There will be several things to do to analyze the sample. One is to get a color analysis using this Munzel color system. Now, all the soils and sediments of the world may be in reds, or maybe they are in a series of yellow colors. We want to find the color system that matches the sediments of this sample. Now this sample looks like it has some grays and oranges. It looks about closest to the 7YR color plate. So I'll remove this and carefully match the color chips up with the different samples. And the chroma is listed on the bottom, the value is listed on the top. So I would assess this sample to be something similar to a 7.5YR, a value of perhaps four, and a chroma of six. So the analysis of this particular area may be 7.5 YR, four, six. After a color analysis of the varying colors down the sediment sample, we'll record and document all of those. We'll also do a texture analysis, feeling the grain size, to see if it's a clay, a silt, or a sand. If we need to stop and preserve our work, very easily what we can do is take a piece of plastic wrap, cover over the sample, and gently push it down over the sediment, and that will preserve it and keep the surface from drying out so we can evaluate it later.